We have done four parts of the electric surfboard, but nothing has been commented more than hydrofoil. So I started calculating the volume to keep my 75 kilograms dry above the water and the result was four pieces of XPS blue foam. I arranged them so that the joints would be offset from each other and joined them using expanding foam which apparently bonds really well. I made a groove to insert this piece of wood for strength and cut the shape out with a saw but it made that terrible no I felt people skipping ahead 5 seconds right now. Okay, last cut. Oh shit, alright now. Here is the 3D printed mast that will go down in the water and eventually hold the wings and motor. This is what the CAD model looks like and it's from this website. I cut a piece of plywood to reinforce the bottom side where the mast will be mounted. Which meant now I have to remove the piece of wood that I already inserted in the board. Work harder, not smarter. I then gutted the board and filled it with expanding foam to glue the plywood in place. I encapsulated the board in glass fiber and epoxy that gives it massive strength. And here I'm standing next to it. After sanding the living life of the board, I gave it some black paint. So here I'm just splashing some white paint on it to give it some color. This is the main 3D printed wing which works similarly to an airplane wing. If you cut it you can clearly see the airfoil design but it has to be smooth to work well so I used my sander and reinforced it with glass fiber and epoxy. The hydrofoil consists of the vertical mast, horizontal mast, back wing, front wing and motor mount too. Here is the three main cables that connects the motor in the water to the electric speed controller above the water. I joined the two pieces that makes up the vertical mast with epoxy here and because of the pegs it should be strong enough but... The metal inserts didn't bite so I pulled it out and bolted the wing all the way through. At this point the back wing and the main wing could be bolted and glued on the horizontal mast. I then glued everything together and here is the complete 3D printed hydrofoil. While in the water moving quickly it will generate lift like a traditional airplane wing lifting the weight of the board and the surfer and because of the density of the water these wings should be sufficient. Here I'm painting the mast black as well which was a huge mistake as it got so hot it made the plastic soft and bent even more. I also almost dropped it. I started designing a container to store all the electronics in and here it is printed. I cut a piece of clear acrylic to have on top of it and carved out the placement for the container. This is the same locking mechanism as on the electric surfboard. They work pretty well so why change it? And here the propeller flew off. How many things could go wrong in just a test, man? I understand that it looks like it's not finished, but everything we have to do is assemble it and we'll be able to try it on the water for the very first time. So I'm doing that tomorrow. I have this huge acrylic cover. Uh, obviously it still has the protective coating on, which we can remove right now. Satisfy. Bluetti can provide you with solar generators like the AC200 Max with a 2 kilowatt hour battery. It can power tools, a kettle, toaster and it can be recharged with solar panels in just a few hours. There is a solar charger, battery and inverter, everything in a compact format so you can carry it around. There is an AC charger but generating and storing your own energy from solar panels is surprisingly satisfying and there's just no easier way to do it than this. It's a great backup for power outages or portable power wherever you need it. They also sell portable solar panels and expansion batteries so check it out at blueri.com Closing in on October and for that reason I got myself 
a wetsuit. Somehow I feel the Vikings are rolling in the graves right now, but that's just how it's gonna be. All right, so this is the very first test of the electric 3D printed hydrofoil. So everything is 3D printed. The mast, the wings, I reinforced it with glass fiber, epoxy and polyester. Here's the electric motor. Now, the only issue that I feel with this is that the mast is unnecessarily tall. And so it will give a huge leverage arm for the motor to break up here. I also installed the propeller. I, uh, I show you how I do that later. Now the, the board, I just picked up some XPS foam, it's that blue foam that you saw in the beginning and glass fibered it and polyestered it and epoxied, so it's quite hard. I should probably have done two layers, uh, but I, I didn't do that. I also have a 3D printed container to store all the uh, electronics in and an acrylic cover to keep all the water out. Now the only issue that I have with the electric speed controller, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you. Now this is what I talked about in the last video where I have two motors for the electric surfboard. Now we just have one, which makes it possible to have four connectors going into the same speed controllers. So there's gonna be four batteries plugged into this speed controller and powering this motor. And that's just gonna distribute all the current going through all the connectors uh, and uh, hopefully it doesn't heat them up as much. Now the issue with the speed controller that I'm having is that now the speed controller is gonna be up in this container right there and not in the water and we're not gonna be able to supply it with water from the from the lake either. So what I've done right now is just, I've smacked on a bait. Now what I've seen some people do is have the speed controller down in the water with the motor so the cool water is always flushing over the speed controller. What the fuck? I like the acrylic cover because if anything goes wrong, which it most likely will, then you'll be able to see it. Now these are massive 3D printed washers that I have to just distribute the force on the 3D printed material because it isn't very strong. So I just place that right on there and bolt it down. And I do that on all four bolts. Here's the hand controller. I had to repair it because the battery inside it broke. So I didn't have the same size and that's why it looks like, like that. We have the speed controller. Now here's the receiver without an antenna and a BEC to take the two cell battery, seven volt battery, down to five volts for the receiver to use. And these are the four batteries that we're using. It will be a 48 volt battery, 16 amp hours. And that's all we have. It's not particularly much. It might give us about 10 minutes of runtime. That's my guess. So the first runs I'm just gonna do on a stomach on the board. I'm not gonna try to stand up. I'm just gonna see if the motor can ev even tow me on the water. And that's gonna be the first step. All right, so something is wrong. It doesn't connect. Okay, now something seems to be happening when I plug all four batteries in. It's just a series and a parallel connection. It's nothing wrong. I've done this before. So I'm, I'm not even gonna question it. I'm just gonna take two batteries and that's gonna be enough. They can supply the power, but it's not optimal. I also noticed that the motor was spinning the wrong way. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna swap any two connectors on the EC. Well, it's floating. Jesus, what happens, bro? Yeah, well, something broke. That may have seemed uneventful, but a lot of shit just went down. So I went up to my computer and redesigned the Fusion 360, the two masts, with some obvious improvements. It's now 40% shorter and that's to decrease the leverage arm from the base where the surfboard is attached. The motor doesn't have as great of a leverage arm to break it at the base. The base is now also not only larger but way thicker. It's a huge amount of plastic, it's very heavy. I increased the temperature a lot, so the plastic, it's hopefully, it's, it's more merged together. But not only that, but the width and the, the X and Y, basically, of the wing is larger. It's not taller, but it's, it's larger. 
uh, and it's far more parameters and way more infill so it's a lot heavier but hopefully a lot stronger the horizontal mast I redesigned quite a bit and it's now a lot larger and it also has the new print settings which hopefully makes it a lot stronger and so just like before the vertical mast slots into the horizontal mast and I'll reuse the wings and just attach them so that's what we're doing next I had to do some minor modifications. I forgot when I scaled this up, I also scaled the mount up and so it didn't align properly. So now I have these threaded rods holding and I was hoping to use some kind of metal bracket to clamp it in place, but that doesn't seem likely. So now I have to figure out something to do about this. So I designed this piece that holds the motor in place. Then a front piece to cut the water to reduce the hydrodynamic drag and now here's the new improved hydrofoil. Now everything was in place so I went back to the beach to try again. So now I brought it out in the water, took a thumbnail and was finally able to drive it around for the first time. But now the motor stopped working. So it was probably just water interfering with the electronics. At this point I got nothing to lose, so I'm just gonna full throttle it till it hydroplanes. <laughs> So I tried going faster, but right when I was about to stand up, the motor it died again. Whoa. Ah. I have so bad reception between the receiver and the transmitter that I can't control the throttle, which is super irritating. So I'm gonna head home and see if I can solder on the antenna again on the receiver and hope for better reception that way. Or I'm just gonna place the receiver on the outside of the box in a plastic bag or something. I put on the wetsuit again and carried out the board in the water and was finally able to drive it around for the first time. I was going pretty quick and leaned back a lot to put pressure onto the wing, but it just wouldn't do it. At this point I was definitely going fast enough for it to hydrofoil, but it just wouldn't do it. I leaned back as much as possible and based on the sound of the water hitting the board, it does sound lighter. It doesn't look heavy in the water, indicating that it does in fact lift a lot of weight, but just not enough to race above the water line. The new improved 3D printed hydrofoil didn't break, so we could just 3D print new improved wings to make this work. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say in the comments about what I can improve to make this work. So please leave a comment and a like, I really do appreciate that. And thank you very much for watching. See you again soon again. Bye.